So here's where I'm at. Um, I don't know how it's going to transpire. You could tell me Warriors win the first two at home. Boston wins three and four. You could tell me Boston wins game one. Warriors win game two. And then they flip three and four. You could tell me Warriors win game one. Boston win game two. Then they flip three and four in some way. I, if I had a bet, I would bet that this will be this series will be tied after four games. Really? Um, okay. Yeah, that is what I think. And I think the Warriors will win game five. And that's where I'm at right now, which is where I, as I texted you, I, I don't know if I want to pick Warriors in seven or Warriors in six. It's going to be one of those two picks. Can I ask you, Andrew Claudio? Mm-hmm. Um, well, first I'll ask how many game, how many seven game final series or how many finals have gone seven games since the Knicks uh, took the Rockets to seven in ninety four? Can you give me a second to talk it out? Well, my next question is going to be, who are the what were what are the series that went seven? So, so this is since ninety four. Since ninety four, give me the first. Give me a give me a number that come, don't take too long on it. Uh, the first one is the Spurs Pistons one in 05. That is correct. The next one is the Lakers Celtics in twenty ten. That is the correct. Next one is Heat Spurs in twenty thirteen. That is correct. The and next one is it. Cavs Warriors in twenty sixteen. That's it. And that's so it's those four. Okay. So those four. Oh, that, that, I thought that would be more fun. Um, <laughs> can I? I can even go back further. The one before that was Lakers Pistons in eighty eight. The one before that is correct. That, the one before that was Lakers. Celtics yep. in 84. That is correct. And the then one, bef- if you get the, the one before that, I'll be impressed. The one before that was 79, which was Wizards. Oh, it's either Sonics or Warriors. So it, it was not the Wizards, it was the Bullets. Excuse me, the Bullets. And it was the- it was the Sonics in that was in 78. 78. OK. Yeah. And then before that, um, again, I boy, talk about I might have gotten Washington, Seattle. Maybe um, I would not have remembered Boston, Milwaukee, which was in 1974. That's that's her Kareem. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and then, at that time, Lou, I'll send her. Yes. Yeah. Well, I'll send her. And then before that was the Knicks in, in 1970. And then there were some some other ones before that. But in any case, not a lot of game, not a lot of seven game series. That's the thing. Yeah. Right. Um, the, the, not a lot of them. Uh, it, it feels like Warriors and six to me. So what I said to you in our in our text was like, what's giving me pause is Boston losing at home to to close out the series. The uh, the, yeah. the problem is like Boston's lost a lot at home this playoffs. <laughs> the lost Warriors have won a lot on the road over this. Run. Yeah. The Warriors haven't lost at home. That's the other. That's why I keep saying game one is so important to me. If the Warriors can show in game, if the Warriors are shown in game one, they can lose at home. Then I think six or seven is in play. But there's a world where if they come out and dominate these first two games and it's just like win one game in Boston where Boston has consistent, like they have those three really bad, like, oh, wow, Boston really should have won this but lost at home two against the heat and one against Milwaukee. Yeah. Like they have those games that, uh, excuse me, they lost twice against Milwaukee at home. I just, I'm just realizing oh, that yeah. now they've lost four games at home. And like, are you thinking like warriors in five? I'm thinking this could be in five. If the warriors hold right. court in game one and two, that makes it fun. I'll go warriors in six. You go warriors in five deal. But I think we're both thinking the warriors here. Yes. Uh, I, I am thinking the warriors as far as like, you know, the X's and O's of this. I, when, when the Warriors have the ball, um, I just am curious how long it takes Boston to kind of get adjusted to, to what they do. Um, like, I don't think you can really adjust to it fully. And I also think like, I think Boston has, I don't, I don't view based on the three rounds that we have just seen. I do not view Boston as like this all time impenetrable defense, despite the statistical profile they had over the last uh, whatever it was, three months of the season. Uh, the Nets scored on them. Now, granted, the Nets had some very good players, but the Nets, the Nets scored on them. And, the, and that that Nets team was not a complete team. 
Um, the Bucks again were missing a pretty important cop mm-hmm. in, in Chris Middleton. And then this Heat team is like, you want to talk to me about like what when's the last time we've had a conference finalist that was this like given their injuries and like given just the general state of like what they do, like just not where they needed to be offensively. I think you could score on this Boston team. I really do. I'm not saying it'll be easy for Golden State, but I think you could score on them. And then, you know, we kind of glossed over it. Marcus Smart and Jalen Brown. Do you trust those guys? I I trust them throughout the game, but it's close game at the end. Do I trust them? Not as far as I could throw them. That's what it comes down to for me. I'm right there with you. And like, just to have the conversation of what happens if Boston wins, I think, and you've been hinting at in your newsletters lately that like the super team era might officially be ending. Eh. But because like we just saw an alleged super team in Brooklyn and how that's failed so far. We yeah. we watched the Lakers try to do a super team <laughs> and end up in the lottery. How'd that work um, out? I think competent team Can building I- is taking over and. Like you look at what what Boston was last year and it's like, okay, let's not blow it up or try to get a third star. Let's try to fill spots four, five, six, seven and eight on the roster with competent basketball players. And that's how teams can be successful now. That's creating a new blueprint, which look to bring this to the Knicks a little bit. I actually have a lot of confidence in four, five, six, seven and eight on their roster, it's one, two, and three that I'm like, all right, that's not a core that can win a title yet. But I, at least gives me the hope that that that's, this is a blueprint that they're not, and I, I hit, I knock on all the wood that's around me. <laughs> it's not a blueprint that that is impossible for them to follow. I don't think it's impossible. And I think you need to, I think you need to be fitting that as we bring up the Knicks, my daughter starts crying in the background. Um, I think sense. you need to, I think you need to be patient mm-hmm. and I think you, you need to get a little lucky for sure. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I Memphis is the example of luck, by the way, like them well, getting job that went the year that they did with 33 wins. Sure. But you know, and, but, but you also need like Jordan, does, does Jordan pool. Oh, that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You I know, agree. going to Golden State, like, and, and turning into, or like, you know, Clay, again, Clay 11, lot. Draymond at 36. Exactly. Yeah. All those mm-hmm. things. So you need a lot of it, but you also, I mean, you need to have a deft touch when it comes to team building and the patience comes in with like, shit, what if, um, I was going to say Danny Ainge, what if Brad Stevens, after RJ hits that shot over Jason Tatum, what Pulls if he's like, up. you know what? My bad. Pulls the plug on Udoka. Yeah, you know? close we were to Ennis Cantor playing minutes on this team in the playoffs. And instead, he was like first round pick and Ennis Cantor for Derek White. Insane. You, you know, know? Um, Excuse so, me. Ennis Freedom. Ennis Freedom. Sure. Um, yeah, I, I look, I, I they need their star. And it's not that they need any star. They need the right star. And then they need to facilitate that star in an ecosystem that exploits his. Well, I shouldn't even say that. Like. Yes, ideally, you want to exploit the, the person's strengths and minimize their weaknesses. But then you look at like teams that actually win it all. And like how many how many of those superstar players that are like the best player on a championship team have real weaknesses? You could talk about Steph's defense like they they incubate that pretty well. Right. With Draymond and Clay mm-hmm. and like the whole thing and the whole system that they run on the defensive end. And like those guys mm-hmm. have played together for a long time. Right. But like, you know, look, they need their number one. When they get their number one, we could have other conversations. Um, Whether Boston has a two or three is the the that's good enough to be a Golden State is. I think they fascinating. Look, there's a world where Jason Tatum. This is his. We've been talking all about Steph. Maybe this is Jason Tatum's announcement to the world. Like, I am now in this conversation. You know, maybe. Um, that's a fun conversation to have. Would. Where does Tatum rank in the last like 30 years if he wins on like best players to win the NBA finals? I, for me, it's more like because it's like him, Ch- Ch- Paul Pierce. And well, I don't see that's the other thing. I don't think Paul Pierce is that's the best a, player. And that's nah, that was Kevin Garnett. <laughs> that's a weird. Yeah. 
but like Chauncey Billups and uh, again, I credit Ben Wallace for for why they won that series. Like being no, for- able to guard Shaq one on one, regardless of how like good Shaq was, they were basically like the only team in that Lakers run to not have to double Shaq. For me, it's more like I look at the NBA as like whose era was it? Mm-hmm. And it's like okay, so we went from we like going back to when I started watching the sport. It was Jordan. Took a break, Hakeem, back to Jordan. Then you go Shaq and Duncan. Then you go Kobe. Then you go LeBron. Then it gets a little muddled with some Kawhi, with some KD, and with some Steph. And now it's kind of Steph's the last one of those guys standing, although we'll, we'll see what KD and Kawhi do from here. And, like, does now Tatum get the next, you know, is he is he next on that? Does he belong in that list where you could say like, Oh yeah, those were the, those were the years where Tatum was one of the two or three guys mm-hmm. who it's like, it was his league. I don't know. Um, but we'll see if he has enough to do it. 